Okay, Excellency, Honorable Guest Speaker, Ladies and Gentlemen, now I would like to invite the next guest speaker. Okay, not worth the time. Now I would like to invite the instructor, Mr. Pai Sarat, Instructor, New Generation Pedagogical Research Center, National Institute of Education, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. His topic is about cooperative learning, classroom dynamic. So please welcome, you have 30 minutes for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so now I thank you, uh, moderator, and uh, uh, how do you do to all the participants here, right? Okay. So now let me share. So now is my slide visible to all of you? You can see or not? Yes, we can see, but uh, it's not uh, slides yet. yet. That's where. So here, that's fine, guys. Right? Yes, we can see now. Okay, so now, right? So I'm very happy, okay, to be as a part of an international conference as a second in Cambodia. And my topic is a cooperative learning, right? So, so we focus on the classroom dynamic, right? So please come with me. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Okay, my name is Pei Saurit. I'm the NGPOC instructor okay, in NIE, right? So now here is as my contents. Okay, so I have introductions. Okay, and the second one, implementing CL. CL here, there is cooperative learning. The second one, definition of uh, cooperative learning. And uh, the fourth one for distinct types of uh, cooperative learning activities. And uh, the fifth one, 10 philosophical questions. Uh, the next one, eight principles of uh, cooperative learning practice. And also the next one, different roles in uh, cooperative learning. What should we do and we shouldn't do, okay, for cooperative learning? Q and A, okay, and references, right. So now here. Okay, so we, we have a uh, few concepts. Okay, the first one that is a uh, expectation. So what we expect, okay, and uh, this one as the reality, right? So, so be class high, uh, okay, we focus on uh, one class, okay, consisting of uh, many students beyond our control links and also uh, homogeneous, okay. I'm sorry, this one that is a re reality, okay, and this is a, a expectation, right, okay? So homogeneous, okay, that is uh, the same quality or the same uh, levels of the student in one class, okay, and uh, different from reality here, right, as, as a small class size and uh, heterogeneous, I'll talk about the mixability student in one class, that they do not have the same uh, capacity or the same uh, knowledge or skill, right? So we can reflect that uh, we use a teaching methodology which does not uh, promote uh, optimal learning uh, or preferable learning, right? So as we know, uh, okay, teaching methodology, so sometimes we cannot uh, promote all the favorable learning because of a different uh, types of learners okay, in our class. For example, okay, teacher center approach. Okay, so, so when, uh, when we use a teacher center approach, so, uh, it seems to be the student uh, passive and the teacher works so hard. And uh, sometimes we need uh, more time to explain again and again. And uh, the student might be uh, boring as well, right? Okay. And uh, example too, so the student do the same thing. So when we apply the teacher center approach, so the student doing the same thing at the same time and in the same way, right? For example, right? Okay. So that's why we cannot uh, use uh, or we cannot apply the teaching methodology in order to uh, promote uh, all favorable learning, especially for the different types of learner, right? Okay, next one. Okay, here's the introduction, okay, continue, right? So the two papers in this section explore ways of making students become more active contributors in the learning process and examine principle for the design of learning activities and uh, materials which allow for some degree of individualization in the classroom, right? So paper one said that, okay, by uh, Chakov and Hall, look at the techniques and principles for implementing uh, cooperative learning that we will learn in detail in the next slides. 
And the second one, okay, paper two by Bolas and Parameter of a practical lab in dealing with the mixability classroom that uh, most uh, a class even in the public school or the private school, okay, consists of any concern related to the mixability classroom because uh, uh, it, it, it is not considered as a standardized school, right, or the standardized class. Uh, or because of uh, we might not have a placement test in order to uh, search or to uh, to check their knowledge or their skill, right? So here, okay, based on the George uh, M. Jacob and Stephen Hall, right? There has been a growing interest among language teachers, so you can apply for language teachers, especially the Khmer literature and also the English language in using the cooperative learning activities. So learning activities, okay. Uh, so the student work in uh, groups and they have each other in order to uh, share experience, to share knowledge and skill and learn uh, uh, the mistake from each other, right? So with cooperative learning, the student work together in groups whose usual size is between two or four members. So in the cooperative learning activities, only two students. So sometimes we might not say as a work in pair, but uh, we can say as a group as well, right, okay? So between two and four members in one group, right? Cooperative learning principles and techniques are tools we teachers use to encourage mutual happiness. So in the groups and the active participation of our members. So after the teacher assign them to get into groups so they can help each other. And uh, so depend on each other, uh, if uh, one or two of them in the groups uh, get stuck some concept or some ideas so they can help each other. So that's why uh, cooperative learning really uh, encourage or promote mutual happiness that uh, they can get some benefit or mutual benefit each other. Right? Okay, next one. That is a definition that we can see. Okay, so sometimes cooperative learning and collaborative learning uh, are the same, okay, right? Interchangeable name in this method, right? It's an approach to teaching and learning in which classroom are organized. So that students work together in small cooperative teams. I would like to confirm that the cooperative team and uh, group work, so sometimes it might not uh, the same thing because uh, group work uh, can be the cooperative team, but the cooperative cannot uh, be a group work. Right? Such an approach to learning is said to increase student learning. Why? Okay, so we have some uh, points, okay. We uh, support chief, okay, to uh, that student learning. So when they are grouped together and then they uh, work in the team cooperative, so the benefit that we can see here, it is less threatening for many students. So when they work together, they uh, don't feel pressure or they don't feel uh, threatened when they are uh, discussing or talking in the group, right? And the second one, it increased the amount of student participation in the classroom. So all of them in one team or one group, okay, will uh, participate or will work together because uh, no one is not allowed to be passive or uh, do not involve or uh, join, okay? So that's why they need to participate. Even they record or they find some source, okay, in order to answer the question, right? And the next one, it induces the need for competitiveness. So even uh, as you know, when we are grouping together, we have uh, some uh, principle in order to assign them. So not all uh, who are achieving student, but also the high higher achieving student. So they work together. So that's why when they are uh, when they are in half a process, so they uh, they do not uh, have. Uh, intention in order to compete uh, against each other. So that's why uh, they have each other, right? And the last ones, uh, it reduces the teacher dominance in the classroom. So, so when you give, uh, so when you assign them into groups, so uh, they have their own autonomy in order to control uh, their team or their members. So that's why uh, the teacher uh, might not be a controller but uh, they only are facilitators in order to have uh, any group that uh, have uh, any concern or any uh, problem in order to answer the question or to find a uh, resource to support that question or that topic, right? 
So here are the learning activity that uh, I can show you. Uh, okay, there are four points. Okay, the first one there is a peer tutoring. So when they are working in, uh, when they are working in a cooperative manner, so they, they teach each other, they teach each other, they share each other some ideas or some concept, right? So the student help each other learn, taking turns, tutoring or training each other, and they teach each other. Uh, uh, if uh, one or two of them in the groups uh, don't understand okay, about the question or don't know how to find the answer uh, to the question. So they will teach each other what they, uh, what they are knowledgeable or what they are aware okay, of the topic or concept, right? And the second one, okay, also uh, jigsaw, right? So each member of the group has a piece of information needed to complete a group task, okay? If uh, the question uh, seem to be uh, complicated, so they need to uh, separate uh, responsibility in order to uh, find a piece of information and then combine together as, uh, uh, as the answer okay, to the question. And the third one is the cooperative projects. So as you know, uh, when uh, we want uh, them to work in uh, cooperative work or teams, so we need to have a, or to set up a question, okay, or uh, one task, okay, or uh, exercise for them in order to work together to produce a product. Product here can be the answer okay, to the question, can be the answer to the topic that the teacher assigned them to do, or sometimes can, uh, can be in the written uh, paper format or uh, group presentation, right? So number four, cooperative or individualized. So the concept in number four here, student progress at their own rate uh, through individualized learning materials, and uh, but their progress contribute to a team grant so that a pill is rewarded by the achieve, achievements of his or her teammates. So uh, as you know already, when uh, they are grouped together, in the cooperative manner. So not only the poor student, but also the middle levels and higher level. So when they, when they are aware of a topic, when they are aware of a, a, the answer, okay, so they, even they do not intend to share in the group as well, but uh, the understanding, okay, their knowledge or their skill can have each other, can have each other in one team, okay? So however, cooperative learning is not just about putting students in groups. In planning and executive cooperative learning, teacher have many decisions to make and many philosophical questions to think about. So here the next slide show you 10 most commonly asked questions, work with your group member and answer each of the question. I do not um, detail all of the questions, just only briefly explain one by one, right? In order to make you uh, clear with uh, some philosophical question like. So here, so before you assign them in the groups, okay, to work cooperatively, you need to consider philosophical question, okay, of uh, 10 uh, questions. Okay, the first one, how big should the groups be? So how many members in the group that you wish them to work together, right? And the second one, how should group be formed? So here, as my experience, okay, I assign them uh, into the uh, three, uh, three things. So the first one can be teacher selected group. And the second one can be student selected by themselves. And uh, the last one uh, randomly selected uh, group. So it, it depends on the real situation that uh, you are, right? And number three, when students are working in their group, how can the teacher get the class attention? So, uh, the teacher has many activity or many action in order to draw the student attention by clapping, knocking on the board or on the table in order to draw the student attention before uh, you assigning them uh, to work in the group. And question number four, what can be done if the noise level become too high? So the teacher need to have uh, their loud uh, voice in order to control the student voice. Okay. Right? Sometimes you can uh, shout in the polite uh, manner, okay, in order to uh, uh, speed down, okay, uh, the noise of the student in the class, okay, while they are doing uh, cooperatively. 
And question number five, what if a student does not work in a group? So that's why the teacher need to approach the student who does not work in the group and then ask them, okay, uh, tell them, explain them, okay, uh, the benefit of working in the group, right? And uh, what if some group finish earlier than others? So it's really important because sometimes some group might uh, finish earlier than any other group. So that's why you need to approach them. And then you ask a, a sub uh, question, okay, in order to, uh, to check their understanding, right? About the topic or the answer that they already uh, find out. And uh, question number seven, what if the student are frequently absent? So it, uh, it need more time okay, in order to check uh, with uh, the student who absent or sometimes you can check uh, with uh, their parents as well. And uh, number eight, how long should groups stay together? So how many minutes that you assign them to work, right? And number nine, how should group be ended? And the last one, 10, plus, what, what percentage of time should cooperative learning be used? Okay, so according to one hour teaching or 45 minute uh, teaching, uh, how many minutes that uh, appropriate for you in order to assign them to work? in a cooperative manner, right? Okay. So he asked, okay, the, the more points about the cooperative learning, okay. Uh, so the first one, uh, heterogeneous grouping. So he heterogeneous grouping, that means mixed uh, levels. So that's why you need them to help each other uh, in order to find out uh, some concept or some answers, okay, or they can share knowledge or experience. So that's why the, the high achieving uh, student can have a uh, middle level student and middle level student can have a poor level student in one group, right? And also they will create a collab collaborative skill so they know how to work together in order to find out the answer, right? And uh, number three, group autonomy. So that's why they are autonomous to design what the answer uh, are for them. And uh, simultaneous interaction. So uh, even they finish their uh, cooperative uh, group, but uh, they also have a connection in the class okay, with each other. According to uh, Gargans, okay, 1994. Okay, and one more thing, uh, equal participation. So that's why, for, as I already mentioned in the early slide, uh, group work is not a uh, group work. Uh, can be a cooperative work, but cooperative work can, cannot group work because uh, group work sometimes only one leader or one student, okay, who uh, does all, okay, for the others. But for cooperative work, so they need uh, to have each other, they need to share the responsibility or accountability on the topic that the teacher assigned for them, right? And also they have an individual, individual accountability, as I mentioned, okay, inequal participation. And the next one, positive interdependence. So they uh, cooperate, they uh, depend on each other positively uh, in the play, uh, play uh, manner, right? And the last one, cooperation as a value. So uh, they value cooperation uh, because uh, cooperation uh, provide a lot of benefit for them. The next one, right? Okay, here, so when they are already grouped, okay, to work, so, also, the members in one group can uh, uh, assign uh, their members, okay, especially the leaders, okay, uh, assign as a, a recorder, okay, one member as a recorder, one member as a leader, and uh, one member as a timekeeper, and the next one as a presenter, and the last one as a RN monitor. So, so leader he as a, 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 a lead person uh, in order to lead the group, and recorder to record, okay, what each member uh, give the answer or give some concept for the question and uh, timekeeper. That means uh, they keep with the times okay, uh, for each member uh, provide or give the ideas, right? And uh, presenter is uh, the one uh, has a main or call role uh, to do the presentation after uh, their topic is finished after discussion. And other monitor uh, as a a general assistant in one group. So uh, if uh, each member in the group do not find the answer for the question or for the topic, they can ask uh, the teacher for help and uh, also find other sources uh, in order to uh, fill in uh, some legs okay, on the topic or the question. 
Okay, so what can you apply? Okay, and uh, all of this one as a criteria that you need to consider uh, before uh, assigning them uh, to work in uh, cooperative work. So this one, you can apply the CO in your classroom if, if, okay, you want to encourage learner to develop their social skills while learning academic contents. And the second one, you want students to use their prior knowledge as a foundation for examine issue in depth. And uh, the next one, you want students to explore issue from multiple perspective. And the next one, you want students to develop their ability to learn collaboratively. And the last one, the learning task is too big for individual students to undertake. So all of these are the consideration we the teacher need to uh, take into account before assigning them to work in group or in cooperative uh, work, right? So what do students apply the cooperative uh, in test that? The student do not have the basic skill required for collaborative or team work uh, because uh, when they are working and then do not uh, their basic skill or their knowledge. So that's why they might not have uh, any contribution uh, to create one product uh, to respond to the topic or the question uh, given by the teacher. And the second one, the student lack the prior knowledge to guide their collaborative learning. So if they lack the prior knowledge or pre-existing knowledge, so that's why it seems difficult for them in order to guide the collaborative learnings because uh, collaborative learning need uh, more contribution or more knowledge or sharing together in order to create the quality uh, of the products or the answer to the question. Right? And the last one, there is uh, insufficient time for students to collaborate to investigate, discuss and think about the thing you want them to learn. So sometimes you need to consider about the time consuming while uh, you are signing to work collaboratively or work in groups. So all of these are the uh, meaningful consideration that uh, the teacher need to consider, need to uh, take uh, account before assigning them to work in uh, group, right? Our collaboration. Okay, that's all from my presentations. Okay, here is a reference right. Okay, so thank you for your listening to my presentation and welcome question right. Yes, thank you very much, Instructor Saurat. So, yeah, thank you for your meaningful presentation. Don't waste the time. Now I would like to uh, raise some questions from our participants. So during the question, we have a lot of questions in the chat box, but uh, I cannot raise all the questions. So I raise only a few questions from our participants. Uh, for the first question is from Mr. Narad. And the question is, what are the differences and similarly between cooperative learning and project-based learning? So. Please kindly answer this question. Thank you. Okay, so that's my uh, question. Okay, I will try to answer the question right, okay? So cooperative learning, okay, as uh, the technique or the method, okay, that the teacher apply in order to have uh, the student to learn from each other because uh, as I mentioned in one class, uh, they might not have the same capacity, they might not have the same knowledge so that's why uh, the teacher need to uh, the outstanding hands to have the poor learners or poor achieving student in order to cut down any complicated complicated cities okay in uh, teaching and learning uh, cycle right and uh, for project based learning so project based learning as uh, I, I think also as a uh, the way that the teacher the student based on the project so it, it need more times it need more times that uh, the teacher need to give uh, them okay to uh, to be well prepared in order to find more sources uh, to answer the topic uh, given or assigned by the teacher so so while they are doing or while in process they are working together so i think that they uh, mostly they consist of a cooperative uh, learning as well. So cooperative learning can be applied in the, the project-based learning as well because uh, uh, the project-based uh, need more time, so need more collaboration, need more cooperation. So that's why uh, one student or one member, even they are uh, high achieving student, so 
I believe that they cannot uh, complete on the time uh, given or assigned by the teacher. Right? Yes, thank you very much, Instructor, with a meaningful explanation to the question. So we have a time more. So I raise one more question for you. And the question is from our participant is Kung Tam Al. And the question is, are there any recommendation on using or promote cooperative learning in the online teaching and learning and how? So please answer this question. It seems more complicated based on my experience in order to assign them to work collaboratively, even uh, we are aware of the ICT uh, application as well, because uh, we might not monitor okay, their student uh, process while they are working collaboratively, right? Uh, that's why it seems uh, difficult, okay? Um, so my recommendation is that uh, cooperative learning should be done in the classroom is better than because uh, we can monitor, uh, we can have and also uh, facilitate them, right? So we, even they have uh, their autonomy uh, to find the answer and also to uh, decide what answers uh, are appropriate uh, for the topic or the question given by the teacher. Right? Yes, thank you. thank you very much for your clear explanation with an interesting topic and answer all the question. So we cannot answer all the question. So I'm pretty sure that this presentation as well as the question and answer would be useful for our participant. Now, because of the time limitation, we could not all answer all the questions that drop in the chat box. So let us sorry for that. And the last, do you have something to say before ending the presentation? I am, uh, I am uh, because of the time, so that's why I might not uh, have uh, give a uh, detailed answer to you. Okay, if you have any question, you can drop it and then uh, I, I will try to answer and reply back to your email. And thank you for your time okay, spending in order to watch our uh, second uh, Cambodia International uh, Conference. Okay, and I hope that we will meet together for later or for next okay, international conference. And thank you. Right? Yes, thank you, Instructor. See you next time. Thank you.